So welcome back to another video and today it's all about the brand new Tesla Powerwall 3. Now usually when we do a product review we'd have the product here and we'd tell you all about the facts and figures but today's a little bit different because we're going to actually go and see one of these Powerwall 3s that's been installed here in the UK and it's actually functioning so we can give you a full lowdown on everything you need to know. So this is it, a Tesla Powerwall 3 installed in the UK. It's the first time I've actually seen the product. Let's dive into everything you need to know about having one of these installed in your home. So you've probably already seen lots of videos, lots of content about the perceived or the assumed specifications of one of these products. But what you haven't seen is the final specification for the UK. And that's because there are differences between the US model and the European model and the UK model. And it's all to do with how much PV can actually go into the product itself. But let's just recover those highlight top specs around the Tesla Powerwall 3. So the first place we're gonna start is the capacity. And what this means is how much power can this battery store? Well, it's exactly the same as it was with the Powerwall 2. So it's 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage. And that's 100% depth of discharge. What that means is you can access all of that 13.5 kilowatt hours. The next thing we're going to talk about is the power rating, and this is where it gets a bit more complex than it did with the Powerwall 2, because the Powerwall 2 had one setting, it was 5 kilowatt, and what that meant is how much energy can it charge or discharge at one given time, 5 kilowatt, nice and easy to remember. What's different about the Powerwall 3 is there are eight different settings you can have. Now the hardware is identical across every single model. It's just software that alters the outcome of the power rating. So it starts at 3.68 kilowatt. And the reason it's 3.68 is it's because it's G98 compliant, meaning you don't have to ask permission from the grid to install it. You can just stick it in, wire it up and let them know that you've done it. Above 3.6A, you need G99 approval. Now, this has eight power range settings. So you've got 3.6A, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then the maximum of 11.04. And this is all to do with the discharge, how much power can leave this battery from the cells in one moment. The only fixed value is the charge rate, how much power can go into the battery to fill it up. And doesn't matter what model you have, it's five kilowatts. Right, we've got some more kilowatts to digest now, and that's because this product has something called a built-in solar hybrid inverter, and it has a kilowatt rating. So just bear with me, I'm gonna explain everything that you need to know. So unlike a Powerwall 2, where that was AC coupled only, meaning you couldn't wire solar panels into that product. You could monitor them, but you needed a third-party inverter, and you had to convert the energy twice. Powerwall 3 has moved that game on because it's got an inbuilt solar inverter. So you don't have to buy a third party piece of equipment. You don't have to have two apps and you get the efficiency gains of not converting from DC to AC, from AC to DC and DC to AC and all that kind of jazz. So the UK spec is different than the US spec because in the US you can have six strings of solar panels into the product itself. In the UK, that is three. And it's because in the UK, we've got a regulation around something called a DC disconnect switch. It takes up some room inside and we can only fit three, but in the UK, we don't have these massive systems they have in the States. So three is gonna be enough because you can put up to 20 kilowatt of solar into one power wall. So 20 kilowatt is an awful lot of panels. On the average sort of 440, uh, 440 watt panel, that would be about 45 panels. So most people in the UK are having like 10, 15. You're not gonna go over the threshold in the UK unless you've got a ridiculously sized house and you need two power walls, which you can do. Just on the subject of the inverter, no one does inverters like Tesla. They are the pioneers when it comes to converting DC to AC. The inverter in this product is so efficient that you couldn't match it with anything else on the market in terms of a hybrid solution. 
Now Tesla reckon this is as good as having microinverters on your roof in terms of the startup voltage. So you can actually have only three panels on a Powerwall 3 on one string. You couldn't really do that with a traditional string inverter because it wouldn't be enough voltage. However, the MPPT range, so maximum power point tracking range of this inverter starts from 60 volts, which means that you can have a lower number of panels and you're not gonna be compromising the overall performance of your solar system. Actually, I think it might be two panels, but we'll, we'll put it on the screen right now. Right, Powerwall 2, Powerwall 3. What is the difference? It comes up all the time. Let's give you the answers. Let's start with what is the same. So both products are 13.5 kilowatt hours in terms of their storage capacity. Both products work with the gateway. They can go off grid and both products work with the Tesla app. The main difference between the two and the three is the charge and discharge rate which on the Powerwall 2 is 5,000 watts and can spike up to 7,200 watts. But on a 3, it starts at 3,680, but goes all the way up to over 11,000 watts. You can choose your setting. The second major difference is the Powerwall 2 is an AC coupled solution, meaning it's independent of anything else that's going on. It can monitor solar, but it can't accept solar power in the form of DC straight into the cells. Powerwall 3 has changed the game. You can now put DC power straight into a Powerwall 3, meaning you don't need to have a third party solar inverter. Finally, the other difference is the battery chemistry. So this product had nickel and cobalt in it. The new product is something called LFP, lithium from phosphate. It's a bit safer and a bit more stable in terms of battery chemistry. Also, you can't cross populate the products. Well, certainly not from launch. So you can't have a two with a three to expand your system. You can't have a three with a two. You can have up to 10 twos on their own and you can have up to four threes, but you can't mix them. So, you know, make sure you buy the right one for your home. Back to you. Come and get them, girlfriend. Okay, next is our IP rating. So what this means is where can you install the product and what happens if it rains? Well, the difference with the Powerwall 3 is it will actually operate up to two feet of water submerged. And that's because it's a fully sealed case and those DC cells won't get wet. Now, what it's also got is thermal management. So most batteries, when it's cold below sort of like five or zero degrees, they'll shut down, not with Tesla. And that's because each individual cell on the Powerwall 3 is heated. So if it goes cold, it uses some of its energy to warm itself up to maintain that efficiency. And also, if it's too hot, it's got convection ducts at the back of the product. Now, what has changed between the Powerwall 2 and the Powerwall 3 is the Powerwall 2 was cooled by liquid and it used to keep itself sort of thermally managed if it got too hot. Now, Tesla told us that of all their data recordings from Powerwall 2s, they never actually activated the cooling system. That's because they didn't get hot enough. So what they've done is put these chimneys in and use mechanical heat extraction and that reduces the number of components. Very clever from Tesla. If you're enjoying this video, then please do like it. And also, if you'd like to learn more about solar, battery and renewable technologies, then do subscribe to the Heatable YouTube channel. Back to the video. So hopefully that's explained all the different variations you can have a power wall set up at. You can have it with solar, you can have it without solar, you can have it AC coupled, you can have it DC coupled, but let's take a look at this one because this one's actually in, functioning and it's working and it's wired up utilizing that DC solar inverter. So come over here and we'll take a closer look. Now, first inspections of this product, it looks like a dummy unit because where are all the cables? And that's because Powerwall 3s have multiple cable entry options. So this one has been rear cabled entry, which makes it look super slick and super clean. However, if you haven't got that luxury, then there are options for side cable entry. Let's take a look at those now. And here are those side entry knockouts and they've given you sort of every size under the sun for different size stuffing glands. So all you do, get a hammer, 
knock one of them, fly straight out, nice and easy. You might bring your DC in there, you might bring your AC in there, it's totally up to your installer. While you're down here as well, you've also got a rapid shutdown switch. So in the case of emergency or you need to isolate your Tesla immediately, press that. And also finally, while we're here, look at the finish on this case. Now, this looks to me like a Cybertruck. It's at that exposed metal finish. I think it looks brilliant. There are rumors that Tesla are gonna change this and start powder coating the cases. I wish they didn't, because I prefer this finish. Now, Tesla being Tesla, obviously they appreciate that not all installs are the same and you might need some knockouts on the other side and they've done that. It's a little bit tight here, so we're having to use my phone, but you've got a knockout, a knockout, and you've also got this DC isolator there as well. So, you know, if you're gonna install your Tesla, you're gonna be pretty unfortunate if you can't find a way to make it work with holes everywhere. I don't know how it's waterproof, because surely it'll fill with water. Uneven ground, not a problem with a Powerwall 3. I don't know if you remember, the Powerwall 2 had those little tiny black plastic legs that were really annoying and quite difficult to level. This has got little screw feet, so like this floor is wooden, it's all over the place, but this product is nice and level. Super easy to do, a much better improvement over that Powerwall 2. Now having a power wall is one piece of the puzzle because you're going to want to control all that power. And how do you do that? Well, you do it with this. This is the Tesla Energy app. Now, this is probably one of the most intuitive apps on the market. And it tells you everything you need to know about what's going on with your power wall and your home. So in the overview screen here, what we can see is in this particular property, they've got solar generation, they've got home load, we're supplying some energy to the grid, and we can also see the state of charge in our power wall. What we can also do is look at our solar production over set days and times, how much we've exported, how much we've consumed. If we haven't got solar, we've got a battery only system, then we can use something called time-based charging. So you can set when you want your battery to charge. So that's on these low off-peak tariffs and also when you want it to export to the grid. If you want that to be done automatically, there's another little bit of software which we're gonna cover off in a later video that tells you how to do that. What you can also do with this Powerwall app is go off-grid. So for whatever reason you wanna go off-grid in your home, you can do that at the touch of a button. To go off grid, you need the Tesla gateway. Now, what I'm gonna do now is tell you everything you need to know about the gateway. Here's a gateway. I'll tell you about a gateway, because you need one if you wanna do that off grid mode. Now, this is the gateway two. Don't confuse it with the Powerwall 2 because the Gateway 2 works with the Powerwall 3. Confusing, isn't it? Anyway, gateways are much more simple than that. Essentially, what this does is take your home off grid or if the grid drops, it's gonna take power from this battery and power your home. But how does it work? Really simple. Your grid supply comes in from the street onto one side. Your fuse board that's normally connected to this grid side is interrupted by the gateway. The gateway knows what the grid looks like. If there's a problem, the gateway kicks in and takes power from the battery. Also interesting with storm mode, if the grid thinks there's gonna be a storm coming, it'll charge your battery up, it'll maintain a reserve, and the gateway is ready to take you off grid should that event occur. Now from launch, you'll need one of these gateways with your Powerwall 3. You only need one, for up to four Powerwall 3s. You don't need one per Powerwall, but you can't have a Powerwall 3 without a gateway at launch. Tesla, again, have told us this is gonna change sometime in 2025, but for the seeable, make sure you order one of these when you order your Powerwall 3. So what happens if you want more than one Powerwall? Well, from launch, you can have up to four Powerwalls in your property. That's up to 54 kilowatt hours of storage. But well, where are you gonna put them? Well, you, you can put them to the side, but you can also stack them with something called a stacking kit. And you can have up to four on one stacking kit and they would go here, 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 or here. Have you got the space? Oh, I forgot, there's actually something else you can do. It's not out just yet, but late 2020, 2024, you can expand your power wall with something called DC expansion packs. So you don't need the full fat power wall with all the inverters in. You just have straightforward DC cells, DC chunks, exactly the same size as a power wall three, but it's gonna be cheaper and you can have, so you can, and it's gonna be cheaper so you can expand your power wall for a lot less than buying full fat 
power walls. So let's get on to the thorny issue of price. How much does a Powerwall 3 cost? Well, if you want to buy it from Tesla, if you could buy it from Tesla, then you pay around five and a half thousand pounds for the Powerwall itself and about 650 pounds for the gateway. Then you need to have it delivered. You have to have it installed and commissioned by a Tesla engineer. Now Tesla installed and commissioned by a Tesla engineer. Now Tesla only sell direct to their installers, but Heatable actually offer this product for a fixed price online. So prices start for a Tesla Powerwall 3 without solar, so a battery only solution for 7995, and that includes the gateway fully installed. If you wanna combine it with panels, then prices start for just under 10,000 pounds. That's solar panels, Powerwall 3 installed on your roof. Obviously, you don't need to buy your Powerwall from Heatable. You can buy it from any Tesla approved installer, and we encourage everyone to shop around and make sure they're getting the best price. So let's summarize this product, the Tesla Powerwall 3. Well, for your money, you're gonna get a bag load of storage, a huge amount of power, and you've also got the flexibility of those multiple power settings. So if your grid won't allow you to have the full 11.04, you'll be able to find somewhere in the middle that keeps everyone happy. And if things improve in the future, it's only software to increase the power output of the product. You're gonna get a 10 year warranty, and you've also got the benefit of that inbuilt solar inverter, which is gonna reduce the overall cost of installing PV. Another market that we can see for this product as well is people upgrading older inefficient tech. So if you've got a string inverter with a narrow capacity battery and you want to change that, installing a Tesla Powerwall 3 has transformed your position now because you put one of these in, you take your DC panels from your roof straight into your battery and you're going to get a new inverter and 13.5 kilowatt hours. You'll also have enough capacity to charge up from the grid at night time. And finally, another massive plus point for this product is the Octopus integration. So you can now connect your Tesla Powerwall to the Octopus API, and that will gain the energy markets on your behalf and make sure you're always paying the absolute minimum should you need to buy energy from the grid. So there you have it, a Tesla Powerwall 3 installed and working in the UK. And we've given you all the information you need to make an informed decision about making that purchase. Now, if you do want to buy one of these products, then head over to heatable.co.uk where you'll be able to get a fixed price to have one of these installed in your home.